is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up the Simple Leech. This is probably one of my uh, patterns that I fish quite a bit. Um, it's using a different material, but it's really simple and it catches fish. This is a Gamagatsu B10S in a size 4. Uh, I fish these in 4s and 2s primarily. I just have a brass cone on there. Uh, it's in gold. We're going to use some lead wire. I want this to, it's a pretty heavy hook, but I want to get it down a little bit quick. I usually fish it on floating line in the shallows. And so I'm going to do about uh, 15, 20 wraps here uh, just until I feel like I've got a good coverage on the shank. That way, as it is uh, attached to the end of my fly line, it's going to kind of dive nose down. And I'll show you how to do that there. I'm just going to tear off the front, shove it up into that cone so it's nice and secure. And I left the tag end on because I have a little trick to getting that off so it's a little bit clean. We got some uh, Semperfly. Uh, this is a wax thread in a 6 aught. And I'm going to start my thread right there behind those lead wraps. And I'll do about four or five wraps backwards. Start to work my way back up. Fold that tag end down and then wrap over about three, four times. It just snaps right off. Let it fall to your bench. I'll do a few wraps throughout there. Um, not necessary at this point. We've already trapped the lead all the way forward. And that's what's going to kind of have it dive with the nose down. So we'll trim out our tag end there at the bend of the hook. And for this, we're going to be using a Marabou Tail Two-Tone. This is the Super Boo by Whiting Farms. Um, really, really cool color combo here. And uh, I like to do a lighter, uh, almost a two-tone tail. I go or two-tone tail. That's a tongue twister. Um, I'm just going to go with this lighter right here. It's a little bit sparser of a, a piece. I don't really want it super heavy on the bottom. And I'm going to tie it roughly so that those wispy ends are about one and a half times the length of the shank um, and then I'll, I'll tie it all the way up to the lead because I want to form a nice little underbody here and we'll trim out that uh, end and then wrap our way back kind of cleaning that up a little bit it just helps to you know notice where our marabou is um, and creates a nice underbody and then I'll take a similar piece maybe a little bit heavier in this uh, regular olive uh, to kind of set on top of this and I've trimmed out the tip to kind of uh, make it a little bit sparser. It was a really good piece of marabou. And I'll just uh, tie that in right on top, pinching it so that we've got it as a two-tone. And we're going to segment that with a little bit of flash here in a second. But I'll wrap that marabou all the way up. You can see we've got a really large cone on there. And we have a nice hook gap on this. So we, can, we could even have a bigger cone on this and still be fine. But I'll just wrap my way back, clean that up just a little bit more with some nice securing wraps, making sure this thing's just going to be tight and solid. And you can see that is a beautiful tail. That is just going to be awesome. But let's add a few uh, strands of gold crystal flash. I usually match the bead. Um, that seems to be kind of what I do for most of my, my leeches or you know smaller um, jig type buggers that I do. Maybe I should try switching it up a little bit, but I'm just going to take two strands and tie it in on my side. Wrap forward with a few wraps, pull it up and over, uh, what I like to call the flying V. I don't know if there's an actual name for it. And then I'll wrap backwards with that crystal flash, making sure not to pull it tight. We don't want to stretch it. And then I'll just do some nice secure wraps so that those two fibers are trapped going down each side. And I'll trim them roughly longer than the marabou tail, just slightly. Now we're ready for the body. Like I said, this is a simple fly. Um, we're going to create about a four and a half inch dubbing loop here. And uh, the reason I, I call this just a simple leech is because when I'm tying these, I usually tie two, three dozen at a time. I'm cranking them out right before I head out on a trip. And so um, it's simple. It catches fish. And so why do I need to waste my time with anything else? So um, we're going to secure this fly with a little bit of Z-Cement. I've had issues in the past using other people's flies where I don't put this on or you know they haven't put it on and then I get a hit on the cone and that sucks my whole fly back into my bend, even with tight securing wraps. So now I just always lay down a little bit of super glue. And we're going to be using the Snake River fly. This is their zero gravity dubbing. So it's a, it's a marabou with flash mixture. Uh, we're not tying in any sort of stem, it's just a, a marabou dubbing. And I'm going to pull out a really good chunk just to see how pretty this stuff is. It's got a really good consistency. Um, when I'm tying a bunch of these, I'll make these into uh, dub brushes. But uh, for this, and you know, maybe you don't have a dub brush table at home, but I'm just going to kind of sort through it, make sure I don't have any super, super thick clumps. And then I'll just put it into my dub loop here and then spread it out so it's right in the middle. <laughs> pretty simple. 
Um, you could also uh, tie in a piece of uh, marabou by the tip and, and fan it, you know, palmer it up the, the shank of the hook. I just think that this works a little bit better personally because you don't have that bulk of the, the stem and it also has a really good wispy flow to it. And you'll see here we're going to create a really nice profile. But I'm going to twist it real slow to trap those fibers because if you start zipping it right off the get-go, most of it will fly off or fluff off. And so I kind of go a little bit slower and then I can really just crank on it to get that nice and tight into a dub loop. And I like to do double the thread on that just to make it a little bit more durable. You can see I'm, I'm hitting it with a stainless steel brush here and it's not breaking. Um, you could also, if you really want a slender profile, you could split your thread and do it that way. But uh, we're going to uh, uh, palmer this up the, the body here. Be careful not to trap your crystal flash into your dub loop. I got that one kind of buggered in there a little bit, but we'll just position it um, like we did when we were securing it right there on the side. And then I will begin to palmer this, kind of preening as many fibers as I can backwards at this point. Uh, there's no sense in, in losing all that, that fluff. And we're just creating a, a nice little core, almost wrapping this like it is a, a chenille or uh, like a polar chenille would be a better example. We're just trying to get most of the fibers kind of not going forward and getting trapped, uh, working it way back. And you want to make sure you, you really kind of get a little heavier here because we're going for profile at this point. Marabou lays flat. There's no structure in this other than we, we left those fibers halfway in. So there's going to be some that are butt ends and some that are tips coming out of there. And so as I get up here, I'm going to do some really nice crank in there, kind of get them in that little cone wraps. And you can see we've got a clump of awesomeness. That is super buggy. I'm going to tie it off going with a wrap behind, a wrap in front. And you can see that dub loop took an extra 30, 40 seconds. If you had a brush, it actually speeds this up even quicker. And then we'll just do a few wraps here just to really secure that and crank that down, making sure we got that dub loop secure. And um, <clears throat> we'll put a little collar on there with some thread. But let's uh, let's go ahead and get this uh, colored up uh, after we uh, brush it. And we'll just brush this out going backwards, forwards, um, all sorts of which ways. I usually go um, brush it towards the cone, brush it towards the back, and then I'll do kind of an up-down um, zigzag motion. And you can see because we, we rotated a little bit slower, we didn't uh, lose too many fibers. That has a lot of fluff to it right now, but when that gets wet, oh my gosh, that's going to be awesome. So let's go ahead and color our thread. I'm going to do an orange little hot spot here um, just in case we got those picky trout. I just uh, like that orange hot spot on the gold and with the olive. It seems to be a super, super confident uh, color scheme for me. Uh, so I recommend that if you want. Um, otherwise, you could you could even make it even a not as simple fly and put like a hackle collar on there or something like that, but not necessary. Um, I fished this, um, you know, for trout. For uh, we fished them for bass, uh, smaller panfish, and um, also uh, we do a lot of carping with this, and uh, so it it works. It catches fish. Um, this is a really really effective pattern color for me specifically. Um, I, I do a lot in the, uh, the black, um, the orange is really, really effective. Um, uh, that's kind of like a burnt orange and you can see how that's just really, really smooth. It flows nice. And that two tone tail just really adds to it. And look at that, man, if I put eyes on this, this would be a, just the money fly as well. So possibilities are endless. Um, check it out. It's just a simple, uh, leech. So hopefully they catch some fish for you and tie some up and add them to your box. Thank